as we have uh, discussed in several previous sessions, we are primarily looking at where are we today in terms of uh, our marketing position, in terms of our market position, where are we today in terms of the organizations strategic position, in terms of the SBU strategic position. So, we did looked at different sort of analysis in terms of the strength weakness of the organization of our marketing strategy. We looked at issues like market share, we looked at analysis of the competitive situation, we looked at competitor analysis, business intelligence and based on that position analytics. So, all that so far tell us in detail how to assess where are we today. We have started the discussion in the previous couple of sessions, where do we want to be, where do we want to be and we are now going to focus more specifically why and how. Where do we want to be could be several positions B 1, B 2, B 3. Earlier if you remember we had talked about T 0, P 0. So, this could actually be T 1, P 1, T 2, P 2, T 3, P 3. So, these could be various options with respect to our strategic objectives to be achieved at different points of time could be at the same time T 1, T 2, T 3 all could be the same meaning uh, say over the next 24 months or, or over the next uh, 3 years, 12 months or whatever it may be or they could be different. That means, this is what we want to achieve by the next 12 months, this is what we achieve by the next 24 months, this could be what we want to achieve in the next 36 months. Important point at this stage is to understand that what are, how do we know that we want to be there, why do we want to be there and how are we going to get there. We have also discussed that all these strategic journeys are not exactly, we can plan for a very linear that we will grow our market share every month by 2 percent over the next 12 months, but in reality in some months it can go to 5 percent, in some months it can actually go to minus 2 percent, in some months it can go to 10 percent growth and so on. So, the path even though we plan for a linear growth as we get along we have to do tactical corrections. So, marketing tactics derived out of marketing strategy, the options we discussed in the last session. Important point I re-emphasize is that every strategy should have a good analytical provision for different situations. So, therefore, this A to B or A to B 1 should have alternatives fall back 
and adaptive components, so that we can take care of the uncertainties as we proceed. And those are to be built into the tactical part of the marketing plan and we will discuss some of these issues today and uh, tomorrow. So, we are now looking at how do we analyze these marketing opportunities, how do we segment them, what is the nature of B 1, what is the nature of B 2, what is the nature of B 3 and how do we actually plan to get there. So, so this opportunity identification B 1, B 2, B 3 fundamentally means identifying new buyers, it could also be identifying new opportunities with existing buyers. If you remember we discussed the concept of wallet share or getting a higher share of the customer spent in a certain category, which is usually derived by understanding what are the unsatisfied needs of the buyers. So, the unsatisfied needs can lead to new offerings or it could be the opportunity to create enhancement in the current offering. But fundamentally in both cases we are looking at meeting unmet needs that is like the core of this topic of identifying opportunities and finding ways to take advantage, utilize that identity, uh, that identification. Of course, as we have discussed in the last few sessions, there may be an opportunity, but not all opportunities are valid for an organization at a particular point of time could be due to resource constraints, could be due to competence, capability constraints, could be due to other preoccupations, all that will come out from the SWOT analysis. And based on that, we can decide that there are opportunities B 4 or B 5 but at the moment we retain these three as our objectives and we at the moment put these two either we reject them or we put them on back burner for future. In choosing B 1, B 2, B 3 over B 4, B 5, we use two types of analysis qualitative as well as quantitative. By this time you are already familiar with the qualitative aspects, qualitative aspects usually relate to creation of some complete new opportunities and quantitative means identifying numbers like what could be in rupee terms the additional sales revenue potential or in volume terms the number of additional units that can be sold. It could be by like the example we discuss about woodland going to China, it could be by way of discussion that we had on about a major biscuit manufacturers introducing better nutritional options or low sugar options in their biscuit range and so on. So, it could be product variant, it could be a new product, 
or it could be a new market geographically or in terms of usage. And we will look at all of these by utilizing a diagram like this. So, as you see here we have buyer 1, buyer type 2, buyer type 3 could be like this B 1, B 2, B 3. Now, obviously, we are almost never playing with an open situation, no blank slate where you can draw anything that you want to. There will always be some competitive activity that already exists, right. So, this could be fairly intense in terms of competitor activity. This could be a kind of a new, there could be very few competitors here, there could be only one competitor here. So, it changes, it, there, there, it could be different. Now, if there is only one competitor as opposed to a place where there are many competitors, as you can understand that therefore, this is possibly in the product life cycle, industry life cycle somewhere in the post growth scenario or high growth scenario, which means that the buyer requirement are well known. Whereas, if there is only one competitor, presumably that is a segment where the market opportunities have just emerged. So, there could be many question marks here with respect to buyer requirement, right. If we look at the demand supply situation, again here there will be a good set of knowledge, whereas here may be some stuff, some vendors are identified, the supply chain has been established, but it could also have many unknown factors. There could be the social, political, legal, environmental issues, economic issues. So, there could be a social move towards healthier snacks, which means that it is a biscuit market light snacks market quite intense with competitive activity, buyer requirements are known, but new buyer requirements are emerging influenced by new developments, new consciousness in the society. At that stage of course, we have to also understand that what is our organizational capability. Maybe the organizational capability to create a new range of biscuits may be the organizational capability to use to, to, to develop a new type of uh, shining metal color paint that is that adds high corrosion resistant and is very impervious to saline environment could be an interesting opportunity for say automobile paint market in areas like Bombay or uh, Chennai, where we have high rate of corrosion due to the salt in the air and in the water around that area. So, it is a new type of 
opportunity that can emerge, which can leverage the organizational capability to do this new kind of development. So, you can see here this matrix gives us a good way of planning that what kind of importance we have in this current plan period for these three types of buyers or these three types of market segments. And we can plan our resource allocation based on this sort of an analysis. Now, the benefits of this sort of segmentation of the total opportunity into three parts, they are not of the same size, this opportunity could be much bigger in potential than this opportunity. But this sort of analysis that we saw just now, the opportunity evaluation matrix allows us to think about new product development, utilizing organizational capabilities, understanding new buyer requirement, right. So, it gives us a good handle on the new product development charter for the company. It helps us to design good marketing programs to reach. So, we know that what kind of marketing program will be needed here. We know that the marketing program here will be knowledge sharing, high level of promotion, because here we are at the early stage. The marketing objective here is to establish our differentiation, whereas here the market is maturing, the dominant design has emerged, standards have been set. So, as we discussed before, our competitive activity as well as our marketing plan has to focus on operational excellence, managing the cost downwards and so on. So, accordingly the opportunity analysis and segmentation gives us a good way to allocate marketing resources for the different elements in the marketing mix, the promotion, the packaging, the distribution and so on. The market segmentation is not only in terms of what we see as competitive activity or the demand supply situation or organizational capabilities. These are often coming out of the current situation analysis, but where we can go can often be actually by digging into, researching into behavioral aspects, psychographic aspects, so that we can uncover or, or discover unmet benefits sought by the customer. Let us look at some example. So, what we are looking at therefore, to when we before discussing an example that uh, we will look at, which is the a marketing uh, market metrics for smartphone. But before that, 
when we are looking at this B 1, B 2, B 3, the questions that we are trying to answer are those famous what we call W and H questions. Who are they? Who are these customers we are targeting? What do they want to buy? How do they want to buy? Where do they want to buy? When do they want to buy? And some additional question to this why is not only why do they want to buy or in addition we should also answer that why will they buy from us instead of competitor x, y, z. So, besides this set of questions, we may have all the answers to these, but that is not enough to validate that whether this is an objective that we should pursue at this point of time. We also need to understand that this market segment is it differentiable, is it clearly different from this B 2 in terms of these criteria behavioral benefits sought and so on. Can we measure those differences are the features substantial and is, is this market accessible to us. There could be a fantastic market opportunity for woodland in the high mountains of uh, Peru or Switzerland, but maybe to the cost of accessing those markets or the ways uh, to access those markets are not within the current reach of the organization. So, maybe therefore, even though it is differentiable, measurable, substantial, but because it is not accessible, it is it's not a valid, it will not figure. It could be something that is you might like to keep for your future plan, having identified that as an opportunity. Now, Here we are going to take up say smartphones, this is a depiction of how you will use this segmentation formation of choice matrices. So, smartphones I mean this is just a, a, a an off the cuff example. So, one can say that there are business users, student users, senior citizens who would like to use the smartphone and gamers. Now, you can immediately see that the category can be smartphone, but the need statement will be different for these different market segments, these different uh, buyer types. right? So, if it is the smartphone user for the business, maybe they will most probably looking for moderate to a complex user interface. The feature bundle, the way to use for business users perhaps will be here. 
On the other hand, for senior citizens, they may need some part of the smartness, for example, to have video chat with their grandchildren or with their family members, but they may not be interested in many of the high speed multimedia complex features, which will be needed by the gamers. So, the requirement for the smartphone for the senior citizens may be here. For the students, actually there may be different within that same segment, there may be three types of buyers, some who will only want to use. So, this relates to once a segment opportunity has been identified, quantified, characterized using the techniques that we have discussed. You can summarize that by using the bullet points in the in this slide and the next one, where you look at level of unmet need and the magnitude of unconstrained opportunity, level of interaction between the major customer segments like we discussed there may be certain interaction between the uh, student segment and the gaming segment and so on. The likely rate of growth of each segment, the size and the volume that for each segment using that chain ratio method and the other techniques that we discussed and which can lead you to also once you have the sales revenue numbers and you have your cost of goods sold you can also develop the relative profitability of each segment. And you can also then summarize these and apply to something like a diagram to compare the different alternatives. So, competitive vulnerability, technical vulnerability, magnitude of unmet need, interaction between segments, likely rate of growth, technical uh, well these two are actually almost same. So, maybe we can just take one of them, market size, level of profitability. And based on that, you can position your, analyze your each one of the opportunities, the B 1, B 2, B 3 and we will apply this to a case now, sort of an imaginary case. We will try to achieve these steps, but let us look at, so we are looking at a imaginary company called mobinvest.com. The business proposition provide investment related guidance, stock market investment related guidance and capability to do buying and selling of stocks on your mobile phone an imaginary, I mean not so unrealistic, it is to a large extent already available, but let us say a company which has now come up with a total combination and they have determined that these are the steps that a customer is interested in. That view current business and financial news, read analysis and commentary from different uh, stock market analysts, financial services, 
if necessary learn about certain type of investing. Suppose, you want to invest in derivatives, then to learn about derivatives as opposed to uh, current stocks. Then plan investment strategy, place order, track your investment portfolio and of course, periodic reporting. Now, this company has identified that these are the unmet and underserved needs. That today daily update is available from some services, but there is no service available which is round the clock giving update from the Indian market, from the US market, from the Australian market, from the Japanese market. So, there are many uh, investments which are quite sensitive to global developments. So, a mobile based reporting which gives round the clock information, real time quotes and comprehensive charts. These are identified as unmet and underserved. Maybe they have found that there is inadequate information available for education and investment opportunity, personalized investment tools. A senior citizen 65 years old who wants to now look at the stock market as opposed to bank fixed deposit. Quite worried about risks involved, but still interested and mob invest is looking at this market segment and have analyzed that these are the unmet and underserved needs. These are the process that this segment of customer is interested to follow. Based on this, they can also do an analysis of comparison that how they stack against that this is our company and these are again imaginary players in this market called share on your wealth and hello money. And from the previous application, the previous analysis, here we see there are uh, seven process steps that usually a customer follows in this domain in, in, in its entirety of uh, availing this service. You can now combine them under three major heads, reporting, the quality of reporting, the depth of reporting, the frequency of reporting. technology of delivery, technology in terms of user interface, technology in terms of push versus pull that means, coming to your phone automatically or your search and find. So, that is what we call push technology versus pull technology. and brand recognition. Now, you do a quick analysis against your offering against your competitors. This kind of simple charts are very useful to come up with a final. So, we do not we cannot arrive at this without starting from here. We have to go through the whole process of developing the entire chart of the 
consumer buying process for the product or of the service. We have to understand the customer in more depth, understand the segments in more depth, understand the competition in more depth, understand the competitor map, match with the company's resources and then come up with apply that to your case, develop the key buying steps, the processes involved in the customers acquisition and consumption process and finally, come up with a chart like this which tells you that what are the strengths that you are going to deploy. So, as you see in this case MOV invest the hypothetical case that we are discussing has decided that it is going to focus its marketing resources and technological and financial resources on the quality of reporting. the quality of guidance, because it has chosen senior citizens, new investors, pensioners and retired individuals as their market major market segment to start with. And they have understood that the quality of advisory service and reporting service will be a winning strategy in this market. So, technologically they want to be strong in that respect, they want to be as strong as the other strong player here and they know that this company has a higher brand recognition, this company is winner in terms of brand recognition, but they would like to invest their resources to start with in this the reporting and the content quality rather than on brand promotion. And this is how you actually do your analysis, start with this kind of diagram with a detailed analysis of and then answer the questions, understand the segments assess the opportunity effectiveness, assess the competitive position and develop your final value package with which you are going to battle. So, this concludes our discussion on opportunity analysis and developing marketing strategy in detail to avail an identified opportunity. At the same time, to keep it in the perspective of the other opportunities, so that resource allocation can be done across three identified opportunities that you would like to pursue. So, you will have one set of actions to be followed for B 1, another set for B 2 and B 3 and still retain some of the options that you might like to pursue later in terms of B 4 or B 5. So, fundamentally what we have discussed in this segment is where are we today? where do we want to be, why and how. Thank you.